What's up guys, here's Shine. Hello and welcome to my new Photoshop tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a bloody text effect. I got the idea for that from the teaser trailer of the 1992 Dracula movie. You can check it out yourself under the link I set in the description. And I liked it and just thought it would be cool to make a tutorial about it. So here we are. Let's start. First we open our Photoshop and create a new document by pressing Command N or Strike N or just go up here to File and click New. And for the values of the document's dimensions, let's take simple values like 800 in width and 600 in height, resolution 72, color mode RGB, background content white. All right, let's create. There you go, now we have our document. And before we create our text layer, let's first set a nice background. And for that, we create a so-called fill and adjustment layer that can be found down here. Click and choose pattern. And now we choose a pattern that looks very similar to the wall in the trailer. That one, yeah, this looks good. Let's choose OK. And we change the levels of this here by creating another adjustment layer here. Levels. There you go. And we change now the dark areas to, let's, to, let's say, in, yeah, it looks here, 95 or 6. All right. And for the output levels, light. There you go. All right, 50. Good, this looks good. And now let's add another adjustment or fill layer here. And this time choose gradient. There you go. And this is exactly what we need a full 100% opacity color to transparency. Here, when you click here, you can see it better. And you should also have it here in the second one, here in the first row. And it, which colors here in the 100% opacity depends on which colors your, your so-called foreground color. And in this case, it's black and it's exactly what we need. So we click here, okay. But we need not a linear, style but a radial style but you see here it's actually actually should be reversed other way around and for that we just click here and the gradient is now a bit too sharp so let's scale it up to 200 and check dither to make the gradient look more smooth so okay and confirm and the last thing we do now is to add a spotlight. Let's close this. And for that, we create a new regular layer by clicking here. All right. And now we fill that layer with black. And our foreground color is already black. So we can press Alt and Backspace. That's a shortcut to fill the layer with the foreground color. And don't worry when the entire area is covered now with black. We go now to Filter, Render, Lightning Effects. All right, and there you see there's a spotlight you can add. You can change it a bit. You play with the settings, the values, intensity, 100% is all right. And here, Lightning Effects, you can choose Point, Spot, inf Infinite, but we need Spot here. And it looks good, so Let's confirm. Okay. And now change the blending mode of this layer to color dodge. Right? And if you look closely, or let me just help you by deactivating the visibility here, there you see the light spot is here on, off, on, off. But it's a bit too weak. So let's increase the levels 
by pressing Command L or Strike L, or just go up here to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. There you go. And let's increase the lights a bit. And there, you see it now, the lights really get stronger. Looks quite cool. Yeah. Now it looks, has a nice atmosphere. And confirm. All right, now we have our background. We don't need this layer here anymore because it's all covered now with the other layers. We can delete it by clicking here. And before we continue, let's group these layers by selecting this one and hold shift and click here to the highest layer. And there you see it's all selected. And now press Command G or Strike G or just go up here to layer, group layers. There you see now all layers are in a folder now, in a group folder. You can open and close it. And let's rename it BG for background. And to have it more comfortable in the workflow, let's lock this group here. So nothing in this background can be accidentally selected. And it helps you with the workflow. So now we have our background. And now we create our text layer by clicking here, text tool. And for the settings of the text content, I choose the font LMS Bloody Bruja, regular. And the size, let's choose 200 points. And don't worry when the text color is black for now. It's going to be changed later. So all settings for the text layer are okay like that. So we go now here to the center, click. And let's write Dracul. There you go, and confirm. And you see now that the layer is not centered. And to center that, we first select the entire document by pressing Command A or Strike A, or just go up here to Select and All. There you see the dashed line shows that there's a selection. And we do that for the software to know in which center of which area it should align the content. And in this case, it's in the area of the entire document, so the center is here. And now we choose the Move tool, and first we align it horizontal and vertical. There you go, now it's centered, and we can cancel the selection by pressing Command D or Strike D, or just go up here to Select, Deselect. All right, now we have to add effects to this layer, or so-called blending options, and these blending options, when we click here again, can be found down here, click. And you see now there are several different styles and effects. The first one we add is here, bevelant and Boss. And you see now there are different types of settings here. And we start from the top. The style in a bevel can stay like that. Technique smooth is okay. The direction goes to down. And let's increase the size to... 10. Right. And for the shading, let's uncheck Use Global Light. And as we already said in the background, the light spot comes from the right top corner. So, so we have to make it like that, that the light also falls on the right top sides of the content. And to do that, we first change the align, the angle value to 45 degrees and change the glass contour by clicking here and we choose a contour that you should have in your list because it's a default contour in Photoshop. That's that one, cone inverted. Now we see the light is now also on the right top areas of the content. All right, and click NTLIs to make the contour more smooth. All right, and for the light and shadows, they can stay like that, except we change the blend mode for highlights to soft light. And don't worry when the lights are gone now, we're going to take care of that. Because the next effect we add now is first gradient overlay. There you see. As you already assumed, we have to change the color tones by clicking here. And here are the colors we have to change. Right, let's first choose a very dark red. 
Okay. And here now a more light red. All right. Okay. Okay, confirm. There you go. Now you see the text is now red. And the next thing we do is to add an inner shadow that's here. And for that, we first change the values to 45% opacity. Uncheck global light again and change the angle to 140. There you go. And increase the distance. There you go. And you see this start to take shape. And what we do now is, as you may have noticed, that there are plus signs here, which means that you can duplicate this blending option. And we do that now with inner shadow by clicking here. There you go. You see now that's become a bit more darker. And the last effect we add to this layer is now drop shadow here. And you saw there's already a shadow here. And we change the opacity in this one for, let's say, to 80%. And you see now the shadow has built here. And uncheck use global light again. And again, 45 degrees because of the spotlight. Distance is okay like that and change the spread to 10 to make the shadow more strong. And as I mentioned earlier, you can duplicate some of the blending options, but unfortunately not bevel and emboss. And the thing is, we now need a second bevel and emboss blending option. So how are we going to do that when we can't duplicate this here? What we do now is first to confirm here. All right, and you see now there are these several effects here we added to layer. And now we duplicate the layer by pressing Command-J or Strike-J or just go up here to layer, duplicate. All right, copy. And now you see there's a copy of this layer we've just created. But we don't need the same effects again here. So let's delete all these effects by go to the layer here, right click, Go down here and choose clear layer style. Click, there you go. And you see now all the effects are gone now and it's back to the old condition as we created it in the first place with the black text content. So if I deactivate the visibility here, you see now the our old layer is still beneath it. So I activate it again. So you probably think now, what sense does it make to create another bevel and emboss effect when the content covers the first layer as we see it here now i mean even if we add the effect now it can't be seen here maybe some of you think now just decrease the opacity like here and if you do that here so here now it's totally invisible but the problem is with this if you decrease the opacity in the so-called master opacity you'll not only make the content invisible, but also the blending options. So even if we add the bevel and emboss blending option to this layer, it's not going to be shown. So that's not the solution. So set it back here to 100%. So the solution is, instead of using the master opacity, we use the interior opacity, or as it's called here, fill. Now, let's decrease it here. There you go. Now what happened here is the same that happened here with the master opacity, but the difference is if you use the interior opacity, it only makes the content invisible without making the blending options invisible. So if we add now a blending option to this layer, you'll see it's still going to be shown. So let's try here, bevel and emboss. And if you keep your eyes on the text layer here, there you go, something happened here. But that's not the settings we want, so let's change them, because this effect will add now lights to this text content. All right, and for that, we first increase the depth to maximum, here to 1000, change the direction to up, and the size to three, and soften to three, there you go. 
and the angle here can be increased to let's say 80 not 90 and for the glass contour this time we choose another one and this and this also one that should be in your list in your default list that's that one ring double there you go and for the highlight mode we change the blend mode to screen and the opacity to 100 percent and the opacity to shadow can stay like that it looks fine there you go and confirm there you go and that's it now we have our bloody text effect i hope you enjoyed it and that it helped you to get better in photoshop i appreciate likes and comments below and don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos Thank you for watching. Bye.